Jerome Powell just laid the hammer on the stock market again because yesterday he raised interest rates by 0.75% for the third time in a row. And then on top of raising interest rates to fight inflation, he also said that these interest rate hikes are going to have consequences that will inflict pain to the economy and to people's jobs. And that got people worried, which caused the stock market to sell off. So yesterday, he raised interest rates again for the third time at 0.75%. And now interest rates set by the Federal Reserve Bank, called the Federal Funds Rate, are now the highest levels since 2008. We're at 3 to 3.25%. 3 and now he's saying that the Federal Reserve Bank is going to continue to raise interest rates to bring inflation down to 2%. Now, there's two points that I want to cover. First, I want to talk about his fight on inflation because yesterday he gave a talk about inflation, his thoughts on inflation and the fight on inflation. And then he also talked about the economy and the worries of a potential recession. So I want to talk about that as well. So let me start by talking about inflation and then I'll get into the economy. So on the point of inflation, Jerome Powell said, quote, my colleagues and I are strongly committed to bringing inflation back to our 2% goal. And this comes at a time when inflation is still above 8%. So we're still near record high inflation. The last time we saw inflation this high, besides earlier this year, was back around 1980. And that was a time when we were facing stagflation. And so Jerome Powell is saying that we have to get inflation down. He said that it's his number one priority. And what he said is that now the Federal Reserve Bank is going to work to bring interest rates up to 4.4%. By the end of the year, remember it's at 3 to 3.25% 3 right now. So he wants to bring it up to 4.4% by the end of the year. And then he said that next year in 2023, they're going to continue to raise interest rates to 4.6%. And then that will be the terminal rate. This is the first time that he's talked about that. And terminal rate means that he is going to keep interest rates there. So what he was saying was a lot of people are predicting that the Fed is going to start cutting interest rates in 2023. Why? Because people say that we'll be in a recession and that to fight the recession, the Fed will have to cut interest rates to stimulate the economy. Well, he said, not so fast. We are not going to cut interest rates in 2023. We are going to hike them in 2023 and then we're going to keep them there at 4.6%. And then he said, we could potentially cut interest rates in 2024, but we'll see what happens there. And then he said, quote, we're focused on getting inflation back down to 2%. We cannot fail to do that. He emphasized this. If we were to fail to bring inflation down to 2%, that would be the thing that would be most painful for the people that we serve. So for now, that has to be our overarching focus. So he really emphasized that he wants to bring inflation down from eight point some change down to 2% and he's going to do whatever it takes to do that. And that means increasing interest rates aggressively for as long as he needs to until he sees interest rates come down to a much more reasonable level. Now, this is where he says that the Federal Reserve Bank's actions will have consequences. He says that there will be pain because of these interest rate hikes. And this now brings us to the economic side of what's going on with the Federal Reserve Bank and their opinions on the economy. Because now on the inflation side, the Fed says that they want to bring inflation down. And one thing that I do want to mention regarding the federal funds rate, how high they want to bring interest rates, is that you don't always want to just take what the Fed says at face value. You want to take it with a grain of salt because before they also said that their target rate was going to be around 2%. And then when they hit that and inflation didn't fall, they raised it to 3%. Now it's 4.4% by the end of the year. So they keep changing these target rates and you have to understand that this is what they're saying now and things can always change depending on what happens in the economy. So now going back into the economy, this is where now Jerome Powell says that while people are hoping for a soft landing, he says that the economy avoiding a recession is going to be very challenging and it depends on how quickly price pressures come down, AKA what's going to break first, the economy or inflation. Raising interest rates is going to hurt the economy and it will hurt inflation. Which one will break first? And this is the chess match that Jerome Powell is trying to play. Now, of course, we did cover this in market briefs. So if you haven't joined market briefs yet and you want to stay up to date on what's happening in the top finance and business news, even before I cover it, Market Briefs is a free resource that I created. It's a free daily newsletter where my team is breaking down what's happening in inflation, the real estate market, the stock market, 
crypto and the global economy into a fun, easy to read and witty email. And you can read it in less than five minutes every morning. And the best part is that it's free. So if you wanna join Market Briefs for free, I got the link to how you can do it down in the description below. Now, the interesting thing about the economy is that Jerome Powell kind of backtracked the thoughts on the economy before he was saying that the economy is struggling. But here, he kind of hinted that the economy is stronger than what people expected. He said essentially that we have a very resilient economy with quote, modest growth in spending and production. And so before when he was saying that the economy was softening, now he's kind of going back and saying that our economy is growing. Now this comes at a time where the Atlanta Fed, who also is kind of a gauge of how strong the economy is, has been cutting their forecasts of the economy. So you can start to see there's different opinions about how people in the Fed believe that the economy is doing. Maybe they're saying this just in the press release to not hurt the markets even more. But this is where you gotta understand that sometimes they say that the economy is hurting. Sometimes they say that the economy is not hurting. But going into the topic of economic pain, here's what Jerome Powell said, I wrote this down. He said, quote, I wish there was a painless way to do that. Talking about bringing inflation down. I wish there was a painless way to bring inflation down, but there isn't. What we need to do is get rates up to the point where we're putting meaningful downward pressure on inflation, and that's what we're doing. So he's saying that it is gonna come with pain, it's gonna come with consequences. Those consequences include a softening in the labor market, AKA more layoffs. He wants more layoffs, he wants a softening in the labor market because that's gonna help cool inflation according to the Federal Reserve Bank. He also wants to see asset prices, stock, real estate and crypto prices fall to help cool down inflation. And then he wants to see the prices of things stop rising and actually start to fall to bring some more easing to inflation. And then he goes on to talk about the topic of it, the recession. And this is where things get interesting because they've always been very hesitant to say if there's gonna be a recession, that people need to be worried about a recession. But he said, quote, no one knows whether this process, meaning the interest rate hiking process, will lead to a recession or if so, how significant that recession will be. So according to him, nobody knows if we're gonna be entering a recession or how bad it's gonna be. Now, this is where you wanna be prepared because we've heard this whole idea of nobody knows, nobody could predict this many, many times. We heard that about inflation when we were printing trillions of dollars, stimulating the economy. Nobody could have predicted that this was going to cause inflation. Now it's about the recession, that nobody could predict that fighting inflation, pricking the bubble that we created could cause a recession. He has just said that again, and this is where now you want to be prudent and not just blindly listen to what anybody, including the Federal Reserve Bank and a random guy on YouTube says, but this is where you want to be prepared because like we've been talking about all along, if the Fed stays true to their word, where they continue to raise interest rates, where they continue to fight inflation in this manner, that comes with consequences. Those consequences are a slowing economy, more layoffs, falling in stock prices, falling in real estate prices, falling in crypto prices. So what does that do? Well, it hurts people who are unprepared. It hurts people who don't understand the system, but it can benefit those of you who understand what's happening, who are educated and prepared. Prepared, meaning you have cash, you have access to capital to take advantage of opportunities. When you see asset prices fall, good asset prices fall, this can create an opportunity for you to come in and buy. When you have the right education, you know what to buy. And there can be many different opportunities. It's not just stocks, it's not just real estate, not just crypto, it could also be physical businesses, real businesses. There's a lot of different opportunities in many different sectors. You have to know where your interests are and what your capabilities are. If you have access to a couple thousand dollars, you're probably not gonna be able to go out and buy a whole business. Maybe not even real estate, but you could get access to stocks. If you have access to millions of dollars, well then you could do stocks, you could do real estate, you could do businesses, and this is where being prepared and financially educated gives you the opportunity to capitalize on opportunities that come your way. Now, of course, everybody is at different stages of their life. Like these types of economic cycles happen. They happen every 10 years or so. We saw it happen in the 2008 crash. We saw it happen in the 2000 crash. But I think many people are saying, What's going on? Why is it so slow? Because we're watching it happen in real time. We're watching this economic slowdown happen in real time. We're watching the inflation fight happen in real time. But even when the 2008 crash happened, 
I mean, it takes time for things to slow down and it takes time to see the full effects of everything happening in the economy. The economy started to slow down in 2005 when interest rates really started to go up. That's when the red flags started to really show themselves. And 2008 was when the bubble really burst. And 2012 was when real estate prices hit rock bottom. So you gotta understand it takes time for things to progress and people are expecting it to happen overnight. But all these things are happening in front of us and this is where you wanna use this as an opportunity not to be scared or panic or freak out, but rather be prepared and educate yourself and understand that yeah, there's a lot of red flags. We're in that red flag stage where inflation is still very high. Interest rates are now as high as they were before or during 2008, right before the whole thing burst. And when interest rates got as high as they did in 2008, we really saw the effects onto the real estate market. Well, interest rates are there and they're gonna be going higher. So that's going to affect real estate prices. That's gonna affect stock prices. That's gonna affect business prices. And you're gonna see it not just in 30 days, but over the next six months, 12 months, 18 months, as these things make their way through the economy, as they make their way through the different parts of our economic system. And this is where you have to be patient because the stock market, this is what Warren Buffett says, the stock market is a device that transfers money from the impatient to the patient. You wanna be patient, but also preparing yourself, meaning putting aside capital to take advantage of opportunities, but also educating yourself that when the opportunity arises, you have the resources and the mental knowledge to take advantage of it. Now, of course, it also helps to stay up to date on what's happening. That way you can be aware of everything going on. That way you can actually capitalize on the opportunities because now you're well aware, well educated of what's going on. And that's what Market Briefs is aimed to do. I created it as a free resource. So if you want to join Market Briefs, I got the link for you down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see why we might be entering a once in a lifetime opportunity to build wealth and what you can do to capitalize on it, I already made a video covering it and you can watch it by clicking that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling. When the 2020 pandemic happened, that was when the stock market and cryptocurrency was the biggest opportunity. Next time, 